All right, we're still uh, getting to the trailer. Uh, in the meantime, I, I went ahead and uh, tested this, and um, it failed right away. Uh, it gave an error. It didn't even give it an error code. Um, it just it just failed. Nothing in the instructions um, would give would shed any light on what's going wrong with it. Um, I did open up this port, uh, this uh, fuse access port. Uh, tested all the all the uh, uh, 30 amp fuses in there, or it said 30, which seems kind of high, but uh, but anyway, I tested them and they all test just fine. Um, the power I had going into it uh, tested just fine, so there's plenty of power going into it. It just the, the first time I I hooked something up to it, which is actually this um, uh, cooler here, uh, it blew. And the cooler is not high voltage. I'm going to show you what it um, on the Blue Eddy here. So, as you can see, the cooler is doing a steady uh, 60 amps, and uh, uh, even the compressor is a slow start compressor. So when even when you first plug it in, uh, the amperage it doesn't shoot up. So there's absolutely no reason that it would have overloaded this. Uh, it's just a cheap piece of junk, and unfortunately, th this is part of home homesteading, uh, especially if you're moving from one place to another. I don't have time to deal with this. It's not like I can just, you know, send it back, because um, I'm not going to be here when, uh, uh, you know, when it. And and anyway, so, uh, so sometimes you just have to let things go. I paid a hundred dollars for this at a truck stop, and. Thought I got a good deal, but uh, sometimes you just get what you pay for, and this power drive is just a pe cheap piece of junk. So I'm really disappointed in this. Okay, so moving on to my next uh, project here. Um, I went ahead and disconnected that the bad inverter, and I um, and said what I'm doing now. Now I bought this uh, power queen for several uh, purposes, and uh, right now what I'm using the power queen for is as a battery life extender uh, for the Blue Eddy. And so I'll go ahead and show you right here. I got the um, uh, battery clamps on there, uh, and they're on there pretty secure. I actually have the uh, uh, the uh, the nuts raised and then the battery clamp secured underneath the nuts and uh, tightened down so it so it's actually a, a pretty secure connection and it uh, it goes to it goes to here uh, this comes with a uh, with an inline fuse which is right here okay so that's that's an inline uh, 10 amp fuse uh, plug in directly into the blue eddy. Now I want to want you to see what's happening here. So the charge coming in is at 91. Uh, the cooler is being powered uh, 55, 50. It, well, <laughs> it keeps uh, jumping around. But but anyway, as you can see that the um, input exceeds the output, so it actually over time actually uh, charge this. But uh, when I have this hooked up to my AC, it'll be the opposite. Uh, the AC will obviously be drawing a whole lot more than can be supplied. But, but what'll happen is this battery will extend the life of this, and um, so that it'll uh, be able to provide power longer. And uh, then when I go ahead and fire up the Jenny, then I'll go ahead and uh, charge both of these at the same time. So right now, you see, I'm, I'm having to look for solutions uh, just because this inverter here uh, decided to take a dump. And unfortunately, I have to uh, figure out other ways to be able to power the things I need to power. So uh, so that, that's where I'm at right now. But I just want to show you right here that, uh, that this battery... Um, this 12 volt battery does successfully uh, extend the 
the battery life of the Blue Eddy. And I couldn't be happier. So this is the trailer that I'll be uh, using to take everything I have to Missouri and it's a uh, 7 by 12 two axle I only paid 5000 for this and there's a good chance that once I'm done I'll just go ahead and sell it for the same price and get that money back which should be cool so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'll be right with you. Okay, we're back. Uh, so that's the side door here. And uh, go back around to the back. And the back door just opens right up, becomes a ramp, which is really convenient for the many things I'm gonna have to be rolling up in here. Uh, this is the generator I was talking about. Um, I don't have it set up yet. And uh, the reason is, is because I'm in a storage facility. They don't allow gasoline to be stored. Uh, so I couldn't, could not fuel this up and uh, get it started. So unfortunately, it's a system I'm not going to have in place until I get to where I'm going. But what this is, it's a Westinghouse 9500 dual fuel. So it takes both, uh, it runs on both gasoline and propane. And uh, show you right here. All right, so there's the uh, 120, uh, there's the, the 120 and 240 30 amp plug right here. So I'm going to pull this out here, show you. Yeah, it's a, a, a four prong. Uh, plugging uh, uh, or, or for a uh, locking plug I should say all right so anyway that's uh, that that's what I'm gonna have on top of solar panels Let me, uh, show you briefly what I'm gonna be um, these right here are going to be the flexible solar plan panels that I'll be using at first and I have uh, I think about 600 watts I, I don't remember exactly how much I ordered, but it's, it's just to start. All right, so I'll, I'll have this. I'll have the generator. So I'll be able to get the batteries charged. Um, that's not going to be an issue. But uh, th uh, this is just a start. I mean, I can't uh, possibly, even in this thing, uh, carry everything that I need. So I just need starting systems uh, to be operational. And let me show you what else I did. Hold on. Okay, so right now I'm testing a new system, um, uh, the AC. I'm just what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have working systems for uh, when I arrive. So um, I want to. I have this uh, portable LG. Uh, it's a uh, 7,000 BTU uh, portable air conditioner and it's still in the base package I mean I'm just I'm just testing it right now but uh, as you can see it's working it's hooked into the blue Eddy um, and uh, it's about 900 uh, yeah about about 900 watts so I mean it's drawing quite a bit uh, to be able to do is cool. Now, again, this is a 1152 watt hour battery, uh, so it'll last for a little over an hour uh, at this rate. Um, I went ahead and plugged in again the um, the Power Queen uh, 200 amp hour, and I want to show you right here why this is a secure uh, connection. So you see right here the uh, uh, the bolts that. Uh, uh, the the terminal. So so basically, what I do is I is I hook these up underneath. I, I lift up the uh, 
the terminals uh, uh, bolts a little bit, uh, hook these up underneath, and then tighten them down on top. So that's actually a pretty secure connection, uh, even though it's it's alligator clips. And uh, so anyway, but uh, so what we got here is it's it's uh, going into. I should say 93. So, so 93 watts are going into it. 900 are coming out. So, so approximately 10% is um, is is being uh, replenished by the battery. Um, obviously, that's not a working solution. Um, it does, of course, extend the life of the uh, um, you know how long the Blue Eddy will run this. Um, a better solution is going to be to get a better inverter for this thing. Um, so that I can run run it off of this because uh, understand 200 uh, amp hours that's um, uh, 2,500 watt hours. So it, it's a lot of juice, and it'll last a good long time. I mean, it's definitely a, a, a bigger battery than the Blue Eddy has. And so what I need for this is a is a better inverter. Uh, the one I had was just garbage, and it wouldn't wouldn't have handled it anyway because it's a thousand watt. It was a thousand watt inverter. Um, this now, now when I turn this on, it surges to about uh, twenty. Uh, when the compressor kicks on, it surges to about twenty one hundred. Uh, again, this is an eighteen hundred watt uh, inverter. Um, the first time it just overloaded it. Uh, the second time, what I did is I. I, when I turned this on, I started uh, with the fan setting and then moved it over to cool. And then uh, when the compressor kicked on, it surged briefly, uh, but then it uh, dropped down to the wattage as it's using right now. So um, this works. It just doesn't work for long. Uh, it's not going to keep this running for long. Uh, so I'm having to look for solutions. I, um, speaking of which, uh, I did get in contact with a Signature Solar. Uh, they told me to send in a bunch of pictures, which I did. Uh, so, um, again, this has uh, an error code 57, which means uh, internal damage. And nothing can really be done, no troubleshooting steps. Uh, the, the only thing that can really be done is for it to be taken, uh, uh, to be shipped back uh, for repair and uh, possibly replaced. So. Um, that's going to take a while. Um, it's unfortunate, but because it leaves me uh, th these these two um, th this uh, ten kilowatt system would have run that AC a whole lot longer. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, just testing out these systems. Uh, it tells me what I need. Get an inverter uh, for this, and um, this will run it for a while. Uh, this will handle the surge, and that's it. Catch you later. All right, so I'm in the back of my uh, trailer now where I have pretty much everything I own, and uh, so, uh, as we discussed, um, got to figure out a way to replace this at least temporarily uh, while it gets uh, fixed by Signature Solar. Um, so, I went ahead and ordered this uh, uh, th this uh, 3,000 watt pure sine wave inverter uh, from uh, Pure Line. Oh, it's, it's a wagon, wagon, W A G A N tech. Uh, but uh, so far, it works. Pretty uh, flawlessly. Um, this is just a temporary uh, setup. I'm going to um, I'm going to be disconnecting. I just want to make sure that it works. Uh, have it hooked up to my uh, 200 amp hour power queen right there, as you can see. And let me go ahead and show you what it's running. It is running my AC flawlessly. Now, when I started this up, uh, just a very slight noise from the inverter. 
and then there it went. So uh, let me show you what I did here. Uh, because this is a higher uh, consuming item, instead of plugging it directly into the inverter uh, AC ports, I went ahead and wired it. So the, uh, this wiring over here is for larger loads that, um, that require a 20 amp fuse. And uh, this doesn't quite require that, but it's close. So I went ahead and, uh, and, and wired this uh, uh, 12 gauge extension cord into, um, uh, uh, into this port right here. And here it goes. All right. I, I have uh, never had a whole lot of experience wiring things. And so all my research is paying off as uh, yet again I'm successful in getting this wired. Uh, it was a challenge because um, this wire right here, th this uh, extension cord, the the wires aren't colored except for the uh, the green ground that you can see there. That's the only one that's colored. The rest of them um, were sheathed uh, directly in this uh, this outer coating. So what I had to do was uh, based on the positive and negative uh, here, uh, positive on the on the right, uh, negative or neutral on the left. I had to make an educated guess, and that these wires coming back uh, coming back into it, or, or the or coming out of it, I should say, line up directly with a positive and neutral. So positive ground neutral right there, uh, po uh, positive on the right. Uh, ground in the middle, neutral on the left. And so I went ahead and followed that, wired it accordingly right here. As you can see, it says a, a neutral ground line, which just means positive. Uh, tested it with my multimeter, tested out just fine, hooked everything up, turned on my AC, and it works. Boy, this is a boost of confidence because I have no idea what I'm doing.